So in today's video, we're going to be looking at the Newfangled Audio Elevate Mastering Bundle. Now this bundle includes four plugins. It includes the Elevate, which is a um, mastering limiter with a few different interesting sub-modules. We've got the Punctuate, which is a transient shaper, again, with a kind of new take on that technology. Uh, we've got the Saturate, which is a clipper. And we've got the Equivocate, which is a auditory graphic EQ. So I'll be explaining that a little bit later in this video. So the first thing to mention about these bundles are that a lot of it is based on what's called critical band technology. So I want to just spend a little bit of time explaining what critical bands are and why they're important. And the easiest way to deal with that is to have a look at the Equivocate plugin. Okay, so um, for now, we're going to be handling what the Elevate Mastering Limiter and these other two plugins do in the next video. But in this video, I just want to outline these two concepts, what are critical bands and how to use Equivocate. So to be able to understand critical bands, we need to understand some parts of psychoacoustics. And psychoacoustics is the scientific study of sound perception. So this is how our ears work together with our brains to take real world vibrations and turn them into messages that we can understand. OK, and this is quite a complicated topic, but I'm just going to focus on the real crucial areas that we need to know about. So to understand critical bands, we really need to understand the function of the cochlea. Now, the cochlea resides in the inner ear, and it's this weird snail-shaped membrane here. And if you were to open it up, you would find lots and lots of tiny hairs. And these hairs are sensitive to differing frequencies dependent on where in the cochlea it's located. So at the base of the cochlea, basically the entry point, these are sensitive to high frequencies, and at the apex, at the end, they're sensitive to low frequencies, and you would find that that varies from high to low as you go through it. So dependent on the frequency components found in the sound, different hairs on the cochlea will be sensitized, and that information will be sent to the brain. Now the part of the brain that's responsible for this is called the primary auditory cortex. And dependent on the hairs that are sensitized, different parts of this cortex are active. OK, so on one side of this cortex responds to the lower frequencies and the other side responds to the higher frequencies. And we can display this in a graphical form here. So what we can see are all of these different sections. OK, and notice how each of these sections look like bandpass filters. And if we were to add all of these filters together, you would end up with the original signal. So our cochlea and primary auditory cortex are working together to basically split up our complex signal and make it into a bunch of smaller chunks. OK, and we can recreate this using signal processing technology and basically replicate this system. So these are what are called critical bands. So by chaining um, lots of bandpass filters together, you can end up with a representation of what our ear is doing. How Equivocate is working, it's basically chaining multiple bandpass filters together to create what's called a filter bank. And Equivocate has a maximum of 26 bands. And these roughly equate to the critical bands of our auditory system. And what's important to understand here is that these bandwidths are much narrower at low frequencies and wider at high frequencies. And also notice that they are slightly overlapping. So we've got Equivocate open here. And the first thing that you'll probably notice is how much like a graphic EQ this looks. But this is a graphic EQ with a twist. It's basically based on the critical bands we've just described. So when you have this MEL mode button turned on and the full 26 bands on, this is replicating the critical bands of our auditory system. OK, now when we move the slider on any of these graphical band modes here, we're basically changing the amplitude of each of these critical bands. OK, so basically we've got a graphic equalizer that acts like our ears do. And this, in theory, should create more natural results. Now we can actually switch that to custom and move them about to any bandwidth that we want. And now this might be useful for some advanced sound design and some other features. But for me, with music most of the time, I usually find it's better to be in this MEL mode. 
And now we're on the full 26 bands at the moment, but you can strip this down. So we can be doing just five bands here. So that's something that's useful. But for me, this plugin sounds a lot better when it's on MEL mode. So what we're gonna do now we've established the purpose of the plugin, let's go through all of the controls, okay? So at the top, we've got a, a rather conventional presets menu. So we can cycle through all of our presets with these arrows here. Okay, we can save and load presets again here. Uh, info will load the manual and um, basically open GL mode basically turns on or off the graphics. So if I play a bit of the track now, you'll see some graphics and that will go away when I turn this off. So this has a handy two color system and the input level is shown by this blue color and the output level is shown by this yellowy color. So let's just play this one more time and look at what happens when I move one of the bands. So you can easily see the difference between the input and the output level and see the effect that moving this graphic EQ slider achieves, okay? Uh, the next thing is the range function. So if I turn this range up, notice that the scale here has changed. So with the range being the highest and lowest it can be is 24 decibels. So if I turn this up maximum, I'm at 24, but if I change the range to say 12, it means that the maximum level changes that can be achieved with a graphic EQ. And this is very, very similar to a conventional graphic EQ that might have like 6, 12, 18 or 24 uh, different decibel ranges. Okay. For the moment, I often like to leave it at 12. So I'm going to leave that there. Okay. So we're going to skip the match EQ section for a little while because this is a function that I want to show with some audio examples. So the next section are reset gains and draw curve. And let's just try and change several of these graphic EQ points. And notice that I have to do one at a time, okay? Now, if I turn draw curve on, I can actually just slide my mouse across while clicking and it will just draw in the shape that my mouse is making, which can be really handy because it can kind of take what's essentially a graphic EQ and make it feel a little bit more like a parametric here. So let's turn that off again and reset the gains back to Unity, okay? By default, I like to use Draw Curve. I find it very, very useful. And finally, this plugin has an automatic output mode, which will automatically adjust the amplitude of the output signal to match the amplitude of the input signal. So this makes sure that they're level matched, and that's very useful for any EQ. Okay, so to hear this in action, I've got this loaded up on the mix bus, and I'm going to do a very, very drastic smiley face style mastering EQ. And I've got the range set on the maximum it can do, and I'll just really be extreme with it so that we can hear what it's like when we really, really not so subtly change the sound. <laughs> So notice that we're doing like 16 to 24 dB right at the kind of roof of our hearing. And that would quite often sound very, very harsh and very brittle. But actually on the equivocate, it sounds pretty good still. Now, obviously, I wouldn't usually be this dramatic, but it kind of serves the idea that we can be quite dramatic with this and it still doesn't fall apart. And one thing that I actually quite often like about this is that I'll dial it in to be more dramatic and then I'll bring this range in until it feels right, okay? And that's just um, a really good way of being able to hone the frequencies that you want and then dial back the range so that it feels more natural again. So let's just turn that to maximum and let's dial it down. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so we've now gone to a range of 8.3, so that means that the maximum we can get is 8.3 of a boost or a cut. And that's really, really handy. And one thing that I also really like about this is that this range will go into negative figures. So if I go into negative figures here, we've basically created the inverse of what we had before. So I'm going to double click here and I'm going to make this a negative range of minus 8.3. So this will actually be basically doing the opposite of what we just did. Okay, so now let's look at the match EQ filters of Equivocate. And how this works is it uses your own DAW's native sidechain functionality. So I've created this send here, uh, which is called Mix Reference Now. This is actually the full mastered audio of this song. And this session is basically a blank leveled session. So basically it's back to its rawest form after recording. And by turning this on, it's basically going to be matching the overall spectral content of the rough balance to be more similar to what the final master was. So I'm going to turn this on and what you should see, uh, because this is now connected to the sidechain, you will see all of these dials move so it does an EQ curve like the mastered audio. <laughs> Great, and to stop that working, you just um, press that button again, and when it goes off from being yellow, we know that it's captured the form that we want. So let's just turn this on and off, and you'll hear the difference. Now notice that that still sounds pretty natural and that's one of the best things about this particular EQ is the matching function actually working really, really well and that it sounds very, very natural. So I use this all of the time and I'm going to show you a kind of advanced usage of this that I use during mixing as well. But before we move on to that, I just wanted to show you that if this feels too extreme, Rather than having to tweak all of these um, kind of graphic EQ points manually, we can just use this percentage which will dial back how obvious this processing is. <laughs> And notice that we can actually go into negative figures here so we can kind of create the inverse curve. And that kind of leads me neatly onto um, another usage of this. So quite often I like to EQ pads so that they fill in all of the gaps that are left from the main processing of a track. So uh, if I go to the individual channels and I'm just going to solo these kind of guitar organ parts and these other synths and I just want to play you what they're doing. So basically we've used an electro harmonics guitar pedal called the Pog to create a ambient guitar that sounds like an organ and we've got a few synth pads as well. And the idea for these is to create a kind of texture at the back of the mix that kind of fills out any gaps, okay? So what I've done is I've created another side chain Okay, and we call this pad sidechain, and we've sent all of the other instruments that aren't pads to that sidechain. And I'm basically now sending all of these instruments to a separate subgroup called pads. And so if I load up um, Equivocate here, and now what we can do is we can set the sidechain input 
to be this pad side chain and now we can set the match eq going and it's basically going to match the eq curve of the rest of the track so let's just let that do that for a bit you say come Okay, so that's captured the frequency content, okay? And I'm gonna turn that off. And actually, you notice that these levels are getting lower, so it's still trying to capture even though the track wasn't playing. So make sure that you turn this off as soon as possible. And now what I can do is, rather than this matching the rest of the track, I can do it so that it's emphasizing all of the areas that aren't in the track. And that should mean that the pad does its job even better because it's filling in those frequency holes. So rather than the game being 12, I'm actually going to turn it to be, you know, minus 12. And now what's happening, you can see that it's taking away areas that are present in the sound uh, in the rest of the track and it's boosting areas that aren't so present. So the pads will be actually filling in those gaps even more. So let's just have a listen. You say come. So now let's just solo these so you can hear what it's doing. So I felt like the pads kind of just surrounded the rest of the music in, in a better way, but didn't get in the way so much. So let's just hear that in context. put that back in the track so there we use the equivocates match eq function and a negative range to make pads have their own space and fill in all the gaps but without them being so intrusive to the rest of the mix. So Equivocate is a very functional EQ that works well on a number of sources but for me its best uses are this match EQ on an overall mix shaping and to create space between instruments and stop masking occurring. Okay, um, I do use it on individual instruments but I use it in conjunction with more conventional EQ. So I hope you enjoyed that and in the next video I'm going to be looking at the Elevate Mastering Limiter.